This CT protocol review is about a procedure called the CT myelogram. The CT myelogram is especially looking for spinal cord impingement, and spinal cord impingement can happen at all levels of the spine. As a result of this, the protocol is very similar for all levels. The primary indication for CT myelogram is spinal cord impingement. It may also be indicated for a condition called radiculopathy, which is injury or irritation of the spinal nerves. Both spinal cord impingement and radiculopathy can be a result of disc injuries, arthritic disease, spinal tumors, and fractures. The result of these conditions is pain or numbness, which may indicate the need for CT myelogram imaging. Like most CT scans, the recommended scanning type is helical, which allows for a faster scan and better post-processing options. For all levels of the spine for a CT myelogram protocol, we'd be constructing these slices into 1.25 millimeters. This allows for very high spatial resolution, which is important when evaluating the spine for spinal impingement and disc disease. For the myelogram protocol, there is no need to tilt the gantry. However, we definitely will be using contrast. CT myelogram imaging uses only intrathecal contrast, which is injected into the subarachnoid space. It's also important that the patient is rolled 360 degrees prior to CT scanning. This is important to ensure that the contrast is evenly diffused throughout the subarachnoid space. For myelogram imaging, the appropriate algorithm is generally going to be bone or special algorithm that's called the detail algorithm. The appropriate window width and window level can vary between institutions, but in many places we do use a window width and window level that is slightly different than routine spine imaging. We want slightly higher contrast, so the window width is 2100, and we want a slightly darker image to make sure that the contrast is especially apparent and therefore we would use a window level of 700. We can see the difference between the traditional presentation of the bone algorithm and bone windowing and the detail algorithm and detail windowing for the myelogram. The image to the left is an axial slice of a CT lumbar spine myelogram. However, it was reconstructed with the bone algorithm and displayed with the traditional 2500 window width and 600 window level that is usually used for imaging of the bones. This image shows complete collapse of the vertebral canal from severe arthritis. This image is perfectly acceptable and very common at many institutions, but in the image to the right we can see why the detail algorithm and a slightly different windowing technique is sometimes preferred. This image to the right was reconstructed with the detail algorithm, which shows slightly decreased image noise. A window width of 2100 gives us slightly increased contrast, and the window level of 700 makes most of the image darker and helps the contrast-enhanced subarachnoid space to be even brighter on the image. This particular image shows anterior impingement of the spinal canal from a small bony growth on the posterior vertebrae. Imaging planes in CT myelography is also very important. It's common to perform dedicated axial reformations of the individual disc spaces. So besides the traditional sagittal reformations and coronal reformations, we would also produce axial reformations in which the axial slices are perfectly parallel to the position of the intervertebral disc. Since all of the intervertebral disc will tend to be at slightly different angles, it's common to perform several different reformations of each individual disc space. This enhances visualization of the disc and any associated pathologies and impingement of the spinal cord.